Selsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Uh, I come from the, the Agency for Accessible Media in Sweden. Uh, I'm actually very fond of all these video things that I've got this you know, stuff up to now. Uh, I work there as a specialist in talking books. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the production of talking books, but I'm uh, going to focus on how we work with guidelines and voices to make uh, them to understandable and accessible for them. The agency for accessible media, we have a mission, and that is to make it possible for everyone. And we do that uh, by providing uh, readers with materials like uh, talking books, braille books, easy to read books, and easy to read news. And we can do this because of an exception from the Copyright Act. That allows us to allow and that allows us to adapt published books for persons with print disabilities. And we don't have to ask additional permission from the publisher or the author. Um, uh, we use the term print disability. We don't want to use the, the term reading disability because if you are blind and, and you read with your fingers, you don't have a reading disability because you have a difficulty reading print materials. Uh, it's really a very generous interpretation of the term. Uh, print disability is not only persons with a uh, blindness or visual impairment, but also a uh, wide range of permanent or temporary conditions. Um, uh, uh, hurt yourself, maybe you break both your arms in a ski accident. Maybe you can't just hold the book. You can also get access to, to uh, the accessible media. And we, uh, we gather our accessible media in a digital library uh, that we're very proud of. We have currently over 140,000 accessible books, uh, non fiction books, fiction books, uh, university literature, children's literature. And uh, we um, add approximately 2,500 talking books every year to this library and uh, 800 brain books. Um, we have uh, our funding from the Ministry of Culture and have a special assignment from the Ministry of uh, um, yeah, Education to make uh, literature for uh, higher education accessible. Uh, we don't have any students at all ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy these services from external producers. Um, we, have, uh, we have to do this by public procurement. To see too that everything is, uh, is done the right way. Since we work with the, with the tax money, we, we want to have uh, insured with the quality. Uh, that's uh, and also, and the producers are the ones that hire the narrators, the voices that we use for the talking books. Uh, and we, uh, so we also buy that service from the proper producers. So we, they uh, ensure us that there's another person, not the person uh, narrating the book, and um, a completely other person that listens to the whole book uh, and discovers mistakes that are there corrected before they are sent back to us. And then we do also want to go get the book for a teacher uh, at the agency. Uh, and since we have uh, I'm going to move now towards the more uh, um, the part of the guidelines and voices because you see, since there are different kinds of different producers, there's three at the moment that we work with, uh, and then very many different narrators. Uh, we need to work with really specific guidelines. Um, we have guidelines for both the technical production, of course, but also guidelines for the narrators. Um, and we also have a very accurate process for the quality check. <laughs> Our mission is not to uh, um, interpret or dramatize any texts. Uh, we are not, also not allowed to change anything. And that's a, that's a, a challenge when we speak about uh, in easy 
an accessible text because we are not allowed to adapt anything we're only supposed to make it accessible. Uh, but we want to make it not only accessible but also understandable. So that's why we have uh, this uh, this uh, question. In fact, we're thinking that they should bear lines. And we say that a good recording should able, enable the reader to focus on the content of the text and not on how the narrator um, conveys the text. So that's why we have chosen that so without like a neutral type of narration, without jumping um, stations, without, uh, without uh, the, the um, what do you say, the um, narrators are not allowed to change the voice of the different characters. Um, they're only supposed to make it as, as uh, uh, neutral as possible. Uh, we have found that many of our users find it uh, disturbing with the uh, dramatization of texts and, and uh, that uh, the kinder is their own interpretation. And when you read a printed book, there's no one uh, but their own head that, that uh, helps you to sort of um, lead into the book. What, what is uh, what the characters are thinking or um so we 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 have a this uh, and also because of a lot of what we do are it is uh educational literature too so I don't think they would be much appreciated if it the narrator uh use the good types of voices and and expressions in, in the literature for students. And of course, the recording must contain, uh, must not contain any irrelevant sounds, uh, such as being or any lacking sounds from the. Um, to the content of the book and then not affect the, the recording at all. we use uh, AI in the form of our synthetic voices that are sort of like a AI aid because we record a lot of books with the synthetic sound, uh, especially uh, course books for students because it's much, much quicker. Uh, however, we don't use uh, the synthetic voices uh, for um, fiction books or children's books, and we use the kids' speech. And also, there's quite a lot of material that are not, uh, it doesn't lend itself very well to the synthetic speech. Uh, speech you know. If you, for example, have a lot of uh, different languages in the book, we only have uh, Swedish and, and English AI voices, for example. So we we can't do everything we can. So then, then we're of, of course we're monitoring the the development of AI very closely at the agency. But also, all our material is um, um, what's it called? Um, Copyrighted. So we're not allowed to sort of to put the book into a, an AI aid and, and generate whatever we want. So we have to tread carefully here not to, to compromise our mission. Does that answer to your question? Yeah. Um, um, it's only, uh, it's not, I mean, of course, the narrator, we would like them to have a, a, a clear voice and a proper articulation. We can't use narrators that have a strong dialect or a strong accent because that uh, makes it more difficult for the reader and it can steal attention from, from, uh, from the text and make it harder to understand. 
And we also, uh, the reading style, even if it's supposed to be neutral, it's, it's you also have to, uh, um, what it's called, uh, convey uh, an engagement and, and nuance of the text um, and present the reading in a way so you don't lose the plot. So it's a, a, a quite difficult balance for our narrators to do this. Um, the pace should be adapted to style and content of the book. Sorry. <laughs> And uh, of course, it's not only uh, the voice and reading style, but also a very important uh, part is the pace and the pauses. And I think we can I'm going to hear maybe a little bit more about that later on, uh, because that's uh, uh, quite strongly connected to this uh, project. <coughs> I think I've, I, I did it in a, I see it through the presentation. I have one more slide about the user survey, the behind time, yeah. Um, we uh, are, <clears throat> nowadays, uh, the uh, Agency for Accessible Media are uh, compared much more to commercial producers of audiobooks now than before. And some of uh, our users can access um, uh, streaming service of audiobooks as well, and they compare and they they call us and they say, oh, this neutral style is a little bit boring. Um, they also ask why we don't use uh, famous uh, actors as an narrators. <laughs> we say we we use uh, narrators that have the knowledge of the subjects. Uh, if you if you are to read a book in chemistry, you have to have the knowledge in chemistry to pronounce the technical terms correctly and so on. Uh, but we, we listen to our users and we want to, to uh, see what we can do. A couple of years ago, we allowed a little more uh, um, interpretation in books for children. Uh, and now we're in, I, I, I had hoped we would be finished with this user survey today, but we, uh, it's, the time dragged on, so we are not ready. But we're going, uh, at the moment we're testing uh, this uh, new, neutral speech theory uh, on our users. So we sent them uh, the same text recorded in three different ways with neutral speech, expressive speech, and very expressive speech. And we're very cur curious to see what they think. And we might use this uh, result as a basis for adjustment of guidelines, maybe for uh, different, uh, we can have different guidelines for different types of books. So maybe the the fiction books can also be allowed to be a bit more expressive, but we still keep the neutral tone for the uh, books for higher education. We have also uh, started a pre-study to uh, explore what type of texts and aids that are most helpful for people with aphasia, and that's a really interesting project that we're looking forward to. Maybe uh, we can publish it a little bit later. I don't have anything with me now. That is something that we're really looking forward to exploring. CELSI, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universita degli Studi di Pavia, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vši informacijo skaupimo ir sklajdos centras. Funded by the European Union.